right, so here's where I'm at with the pod now. I've marked out my flighting. I've set it up for twin flighting, so that means there's actually two sections of flighting that are going to be running beside each other around this screw. Since I'm using a little bit smaller flighting this time, three quarter inch instead of two inch, I think having them doubled up is going to give me the traction I need. Uh, what I ended up going with was about an 18 inch pitch on the screw, which is exactly the same as the pitch on my smaller screws. And what that means is, for every revolution of this pod, I'm going to move forward 18 inches. So one revolution means 18 inches forward. Same as the last thing, which means the speeds are going to be about the same. Uh, I wasn't trying to make something really fast here, so that's fine with me. But it does give me a better mechanical advantage because of the larger screw with the same pitch is basically like switching from a coarse thread bolt to a fine thread bolt because uh, it actually lessens the uh, angle of the screw. So what I end up with here is if you look at the proximate angle of this pitch is about 33 degrees. And according to what I can tell from research, uh, the Chrysler screw vehicle, I don't know if you look it up yet or not, but it uh, has about 32 degree pitch on it, a little more aggressive. The Fordson snow machine is a little bit higher, it's probably 38, almost to 40 degrees. So I'm somewhere in between the two now. Um, my last machine was probably 28 degrees, so yeah, it, it was a little bit aggressive, probably part of the reason I was breaking stuff. So, Anyways, got it all marked out. Next step is to bend it up. Well, I actually went to the store to buy the supplies to make one of these uh, rollers. And they had a display model that was missing some pieces that they're blowing out for basically less than I would have bought the parts to make it. So needless to say, I just got a new tool, but that's okay. Um, so this only came with round dies. And what I'm going to do, I noticed this one has quite a bit of meat on the side here. I'm going to machine a groove into it, quarter inch, so that I can bend my uh, bar on the flat through it. Okay, so I've got the dies installed. Uh, I also have made the wheel that was one of the missing pieces on this tube roller that I bought. Which is kind of funny because you need a tube roller basically to make the wheel, so good deal there, I say. Anyways, uh, so here's some the way the grooves turned out. You're going to have a groove in each roller, and then that's where your flat bar is going to sit and stop it from tweaking because it's going to go roller to roller, kind of like so. And hopefully I'm going to be able to run that through and bend it the hard way. So we'll give it a shot here and see how it goes. So here's the fun part. Last time that I calculated what size circle I need to cut out to bend a flighting out of, I screwed it up. And the reason I did is because I was thinking in two dimensions and not three. So what I was thinking was that if this was my screw and this is my flighting, I was basically treating that as a triangle, each section of flighting. And that is what I was using to determine my circle size. Well, that doesn't really work. And uh, it has to do with the fact that it's a helix, it's not a circle. And really, apparently it's hard to calculate and, and lay into a flat position. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to still determine uh, the hypotenuse of this triangle and just a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So I'll do that right now. I got a 14 and a half, uh, sorry, 14 and a half squared plus 9 squared equals that. And so 210 and a quarter 
plus 81 equals x squared. And that gives me square root of 291.25 plus 17.06. So 17.06 is what I used last time. And it doesn't work. It ends up being too big. And that also made my flighting too aggressive in the end because I didn't go with the marking on my pipe. Now I've searched high and low on a way to do this. Apparently it's even hard for some an AutoCAD program to render this in a flat shape. But on uh, extensive searching on farm forms and stuff, a farmer from the States told me what he does is he takes that hypotenuse and he divides it by 1.13. And I asked him why he does that. And he says trial and error over there is he's just developed that that is as close as you can get to when he's repairing flighting on an auger or something. So in the end, that gives me 15.1 and that's what I'm going to go with to roll my uh, flat bar into and from there hopefully it's going to fit snug on my tubing or not my tubing my pods but uh, we'll see how that goes it didn't go well last time so I don't know I'm sure you guys will have all kinds of things to say about this and how it's wrong but that's what I'm doing I'm doing just a uh, five foot long bars just gonna make about one revolution minus the part I'm gonna lose so Bending it anyways. Not too bad, not too bad at all. It did put a bit of a weird kind of dish into it. I think that's mainly some roller alignment stuff that'll have to work out, but it's about a 15 and a bit inch circle. So all I gotta do is about uh, 12 of those, <laughs> which should be fun. So the plan for installing these is gonna be basically the same as the last time I did it. I'm gonna end up cutting these once the radius stops so I'll lose a bit and then I'm just going to stretch them Ugh. and then I'm going to just bend them and weld them to the tanks and fight them the whole way probably.
made some progress. Uh, it was pretty tough going as usual. Uh, this is basically two rings put on. And uh, I had a hard time filming it because his camera kept getting in my way. So either way, you kind of see how these ended up. They did go on in the end okay, but there was a lot of beating and cursing as usual. Uh, pretty much similar to the last time I did it, but a little easier because a little less metal I'm dealing with. But uh, you can see the shape that's taking place here. It's looking pretty good. I am. Uh, the formula that I had used and the farmer told me of dividing by 1.13 actually did work, believe it or not. So, uh, approximate 15, 15.1 inch circles is working out on this tube. So, I bent up some more and uh, I just got to cut them and keep going. But it's going to take time, it's going to take longer than I thought, but I think it's going to work.